Hey everyone, in this video we'll be going over a very powerful problem solving technique for proofs, coloring. Indeed, this strategy revolves around coloring objects in a meaningful way so as to give us more insight into a problem. Since the best way to learn coloring is through example, the majority of this video will be made up of examples and analysis. We'll start with a pretty simple example. Consider an 8x8 chessboard which has the following two corners cut out of it. Is it possible to cover this modified chessboard with 1 by 2 dominoes? In the case of this problem, the chessboard tiles are already colored in an advantageous way. In particular, notice that any domino that we place down on the board must cover exactly one black tile and exactly one white tile. However, since there are 30 black tiles and 32 white tiles, we cannot possibly cover the whole board with dominoes. If we could, then the number of black and white tiles would be equal. Thus, we have shown that there is no valid domino tile. From this first problem, we can find two key insights. Firstly, coloring is often used to disprove or guarantee the existence of a certain end goal. And secondly, whenever we deal with problems revolving around covering a grid with objects, coloring is often the first technique that comes to mind. In fact, our next example also revolves around tiling a grid, but this time we need to be a little bit more creative. Consider a 6x6 board. Can we cover it completely with 1x4 dominoes? Notice that if we were to color this board like a chessboard, we don't really get any useful information. Each domino would cover 2 white and 2 black tiles, and there would be a total of 18 black and 18 white tiles. No problems there. However, if we get a little creative, we can find an actually useful coloring, as shown here. In this coloring, each domino must cover either 0 or 2 black tiles, which means that there should be an even total amount of black tiles. However, the board has 9 black tiles, which means that no possible domino tiling exists. Additionally, notice that we can generalize this proof to any size board as long as it has an odd number of black tiles. As an extra challenge, try to find all dimensions of boards that don't have a valid domino tiling. Alternatively, try to solve this problem using a different coloring. As a hint, you may end up using four colors. Alright, so we've seen how colorings can be used with grids. What else? Well, consider a graph like the one shown here. Is there a path on this graph that passes through every vertex a single time? The answer becomes quite simple once we color in the vertices of the graph as shown, so that every black vertex must move to a white vertex and vice versa. There are 4 white vertices and 6 black vertices, but our path, which is of length 10, must cover 5 white vertices and 5 black vertices. Thus, no such path exists. Alright, and that's it. Although we've only seen how coloring can be used in a few scenarios, hopefully these examples will provide you with new ways to tackle difficult proofs. Thanks for watching.